even with family, I would say it's best to have contracts you in this type of situation. No matter what, <laughs> right. you absolutely, <laughs> positively, one hundred percent need a contract. I mentioned a, a promissory note, which is a, a, which is a form of a contract. Or if you're doing this as a partnership, then you guys go need to go ahead and make an operating agreement. Exactly, we already explained. But a contract needs to be written out and specified. That way, nobody's confused. Everybody knows uh, how things are going to go moving forward. <laughs> Hey, welcome to Uncommon State of Mind, where we debate different ways to leverage your next investment to create time freedom, legacy impact, and generational wealth, so you can live that uncommon life. But in order to do that, you must be uncommon. My name is Joey, aka Mr. J Mays. Hey, and I'm AD. You know, AD the Fly Realtor. Dope. So, um, part two of our series, AD, what are we talking about? Uh, this series is how to get into your multifamily or how to buy your first multifamily investment. Part one was about uh, finding your agent and why you need to find an agent. That's step number one into buying that property. So for a quick, quick, quick recap, uh, first, just make sure you get a good idea of what you're trying to do. Get a little bit of knowledge on that and then go find. Hold on. How about y'all just go watch that? that, that <laughs> right, how right. That? Go watch yeah. episode one. <laughs> right, right, right. And then come back to episode two. So that way, you know, we're all on the same page. And you're up to date. There we go. Right. So today, step two is going to be to secure financing. Mm. So that can mean multiple things. There are cash buyers. There are people who get uh, FHA conventional loans. Then there's commercial loans. There's investor loans. There's DSCR loans. You need to secure financing. So what that means is, you want to get either pre-qualified or have that money in hand already or you know where you're getting that cash from before you even go out there and put it in offers. Before you even hit the marketplace looking for properties, really, because it, it serves you no good to be out here looking for properties and you don't even know how much borrowing power you have or how much access to cash you have. Mm. You know, so whether you're going to have private investors, you're going to have private money uh, inserted into your deal, or if you're going to use a loan based on your uh, income and credit, you really are going to want to make sure you have financing tied up already. Mm. Now, that's a good point, man. And there's a lot of ways to, to get financing. Me personally, being on the credit side, Pause. Let me go back. So I was a part of an investment group where we kind of use each other. We use private money to kind of, you know, pocket our cash together and go take down properties, which was a great strategy. And we, you know, our team ended up doing a lot of flips that way. But um, after that, um, I was also introduced to like business credit and how you could use business credit to kind of um, help with like, you know, depending on your strategy, if your strategy is fix or flips after you get financing or you use the private capital, you can then use the credit to fix up the property and things of that nature. Right, right. Exactly. See, so that's exactly what I mean there. You got to secure that financing because you really want to know you you want to be able to hit the marketplace with confidence. So whether that's putting in offers or just looking at prospective deals, you want to be able to have confidence in. All right. If I get this deal at this amount that I'm willing to pay, how am I going to pay for it? <laughs> you know, and more importantly, what am I going to do with it once I do have it? You know, you need to have all of that already in mind. It's not, it's really not a matter of guessing or figuring it out on the fly. You know, there are a lot of things as an entrepreneur or whatever you may be where like you can figure it out as you go. But this is one of those things where it's like, no, get that money as soon as possible or at least have that strategy of how you're gonna go get that money, so. Right, so for, what what do you think are a couple of decent strategies? So I just named one, there's, there's you can be a part of an investment group, you can also utilize business credit or just regular credit in general. So what other strategies do we have out there? I mean, those are good, those are both very good. Or um, for instance, there's people who, they will let a lot of people they know or let a lot of people they come in contact with know that they're looking to do like, to buy real estate, you know? Uh, this is where you would hit up people with disposable income or extremely wealthy people with disposable income and like just figure out how much money do you have like are you willing to go in with me under an LLC or some kind of um, operating agreement where 
you know, I'm going to, you know, we're going to purchase this property. These are my plans. This is what we'll do with it after. And this is how quickly we can get your money back. Right. These are all important. So with that, you definitely want to have everything cut out in regards to to how the cash is going to go. Is this person going to be an equity partner, meaning you guys are 50 50 on this deal? Or is this person a money partner where they're just putting the money in? Uh, you put together a promissory note and, you know, you, you have the expectations on, you know, the type of returns this person is going to get. And, you know, you could be accurate with that. With, right. Uh, and with the, that depiction. And also within that, it, you have to it would have to be agreed upon beforehand. Are they going to be getting paid monthly uh, out of like are one? Are they getting paid monthly or are they just getting paid in the lump sum? once the transaction is fully completed? Uh, or are they going to get interest-only payments until you're able to make that full payment amount? What's it going to be? So, you like, even with family, I would say it's best to have contracts you in this type of situation. No matter what, <laughs> right. you absolutely, positively, 100% need a contract. I mentioned a, a promissory note, which is a, a, which is a form of a contract. Or if you're doing this as a partnership, then you guys go need to go ahead and make an operating agreement exactly. as we already explained. But a contract needs to be written out and specified. That way nobody's confused. Everybody knows uh, how things are going to go moving forward. No surprises, no uh, no oopsies. Right. You know, everybody has clear expectations on what to expect. Another thing that I'll say in regards to, uh, that's acquiring cash, but you also want to set a realistic or maybe even maybe even the worst case scenario in how somebody is going to be, you know, recouped or yes. even, even um, scenarios in which you're not getting the money when, at the time that is specified, you have to have contingencies in there of how you're going to operate. What's going to happen at that really. And I'm glad you said that too, because, you know, there's a, uh, there's people out there who they, um, they crowdfund to go invest and they may promise you a 10% return where they kind of already know they're going to get at least a 15%, but they, <laughs> you know, they dampen those uh, expectations a little just in case, because you, that's that contingency. You don't want something to surprise you or happen. And then all of a sudden you can keep up with the promises you made. Yeah. And then also you need to have a backup strategy low key because it, let's say everything just completely doesn't work out the share the shareholders have to get paid first mm -hmm. when i say the shareholders i mean the people who put money into the deal you get paid last that's one <laughs> thing about being an entrepreneur you're always going to be the last one to get paid yeah. business owner entrepreneur whatever you are you're the last one so make sure that you have a way for everybody to get the money they're owed uh first and then you can take off the top or take off you know at the end yeah and always uh remember to under promise and over deliver always over, always under promise over deliver so if you know that you can get this deal we did fix and flips we knew that we can get flips done between uh three to six months depending on the type of property but we always uh extrapolated it out to about a year like right, year to right end. so that way if we get your money back you know within that year and of course we're going to be done in three months you're like oh snaps i want to invest with these people again it just, exactly it just, it just gives you so much more cushion and uh, stability yeah, because even as a deal finder, when I'm looking at flips, I estimate for a six month period, whereas a lot of real good uh, flippers or people who really know what they're doing, they might be able to do it in three to four months. But like I said, I always have that extra buffer room just in case everything goes to hell. Mm -hmm. You know, you always want to have that space like, and be safe. Like, you know, it's like if interest rates all of a sudden spike up, then, you know, exactly. yeah. <laughs> let's, real life examples, right? Right. So that's with um, primarily cash. You know, we're, that was pretty much a strategy for primarily cash. But then there's loans. Mm. There are different types of loans. There's hard money loans. Uh, there's FHA loans. There's conventional loans. So uh, that type of financing, you're going to want, well, let's go with FHA conventional loans. So for that type of financing, that's where you're going to want to have like a mortgage broker. Uh, you're going to want to find someone who has access to lenders that will be able to get you the best deal available for you. Mm. So um, I don't typically advise for people to just go to the people they bank with or to just go to any big bank like, oh, like I'm gonna go to Wells Fargo. Like right. I don't advise that because more often than not, you're not even gonna get their best rates. They give their best rates 
to those individual brokers because they if you bank with them they know they have a good idea that okay like you're coming to us you already bank with us you just gonna take whatever we give you right. so let's run it up yeah. but if when those individual brokers those are the people that they give the best loans to because they know those are people who might not have ever even heard about their lending uh, facility or, right, right. you know what I mean? So they give the best options and the best loan uh, products to those people. So mm -hmm. go through these brokers. Uh, this is something that if you go back to step one and you have that agent who has the expertise, they usually have a contact list of people. I have lenders that I, I hit up for different kinds of scenarios, you know what I mean? Let me, let me just plug something in. So actually we did an episode breaking down the different loan types. Right, like, right. Uh, so I'm probably gonna link it up somewhere in this episode, but we break that down. So if you guys wanna hop to that episode and kind of look at the different loan types that AD broke down, uh, check that out as well. There'll be a link in the in the, in the video. Right, so, um, so that was for uh, FHA conventional loans. Uh, if you're gonna do hard money, that's, a lot of the same, like with hard money loans, you want to know how much money you need to put down. Do you already have this money? Another scenario of am I going to go get that money from someone else? The dope thing about loans like that, like it, the loans for investors, is that it, it depends a lot less on you and your ability to pay. It more so depends on the ability of that property to perform. Right. So that's a dope thing, but still you are going to want to have these things lined up. Mm. Uh, so uh, with hard money, you're going to want to know, all right, well, how much do we put down? How much are they willing to give me? Are they going to pay me the full amount of repair costs right. to fix this property? If it's a DSCR loan, debt service coverage ratio, mm -hmm. um, typically that's going to be 25%, but in some cases it could be 30, it could be higher. Mm -hmm. You need to know what the best deal you can get is and what kind of stipulations there are going to be and what they're willing, what kind of ratio as far as um, cash flow or debt service coverage they're willing to let you slide with. Because it might change if you have multiple loans with them, but I know for a beginner, it's they're going to probably expect the the highest amount from you right. as opposed to somebody they already work with. And also with hard money loans, I know that for, with some hard money loans, there's points associated with them. Right, so right. definitely want to know if there are points associated with that. And can you, can you explain to them what points are? Well, so, so the points, they typically... That would really just go into like what your payment back is going to be like what kind of payment back to them am i paying um there are some hard money lenders who most of them you have to pay back on a monthly basis and then once you refinance or you sell that property that's when you're able to fully pay them out and then you just have ownership of your asset but there are some who they won't even make you pay every month they will move all those payments until the end. You still have to make, it will still be the same amount that you have to pay, but there is certain peace of mind that some people may get from not having to make a payment every month. Like, okay, when, when I'm done with this project, that's when you could get paid. That's a good option too. But again, make sure you know yeah. <laughs> what it is you're gonna have to do yeah. because it, you don't wanna get into a situation where you've signed things or you've accepted money and now, Certain things that you didn't know so, were going to oh, happen. By the way, you, you have to right, Ex <laughs> exactly. Like, like and and you don't it, and if you have to, that's okay. Just make sure you know ahead of time. Yeah, you don't want a situation where you're shocked by what they're expecting from you. Exactly. So that's why you secure financing ahead of time. Like I said, because then you can go to any asset, you look at any asset, and you get a better idea of what it's going to be like once you're. Uh, operating and taking control of that asset. And you can go into it with a clear mind and not have to be like, you don't have to feel rushed or under pressure to find a funding. Right. You know, it you, eliminates the guesswork. Exactly. Yeah. And they, you know, if you, you can actually shop around and feel at ease shopping around and finding the right uh, type of lending um, vehicle for you instead of being like, damn, I have this property already and yeah. I have to find funding there. Exactly. Like, you know, the first option that's in front of you, you're like, shit, let me take this. No, for real. <laughs> and it's it, and honestly, what it does, too, is that it allows you to put offers in that will be quicker to close. And that might be 
the competitive advantage you need to get your offer accepted over someone else's because sellers love somebody who looks promising to close, but also who can promise to close quickly. Mm. Um, you're not necessarily tied to that because if you're already under contract, it's a lot easier to extend the uh, that um, escrow length than you think. So you're not necessarily tied to that, but you do want that as an option where you can close quickly. Yeah. Um, a client I can think of off head, he buys properties regularly, but because uh, we already know his buying criteria and we already know what kind of expectations his lenders have. We know who he's going to go to. I can actually confidently look for properties on his behalf. I can put in offers on his behalf. And if it gets accepted, that's when I present it to him and he decides if this is a property he wants to move forward with or what his next option is. Uh, I, I got access to this client through my mentor so, uh, but there's lots of people like this. We all so, trying to be like that guy. All right, is. myself included. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But what my point is that because he knows all these things already, he can either confidently go into the marketplace or he can send people like me to confidently go and find these deals for him, knowing already what the stipulations are, already what the criteria is, and already what kind of um, debt service coverage he's going to need back so that makes it easier and it allows me to have a better chance of finding the properties that work for him at the amounts that work for him Boom. yeah Boom. so um that's pretty much it really i didn't want to stick on this too long but really the idea is secure that financing because yeah. like we said it's you just can enter that marketplace with a lot more confidence you can search for properties with a lot more confidence and you have a competitive advantage when uh, sellers and seller agents understand that you already have your financing. Mm. Honestly, this is supposed to be a debate show, but on either side, dude, like, honestly, you need financing. Period. Right. Like, so, you can't even debate this. You can't like, debate that. You get that. When the money's funny, that's when there's problems. <laughs> you make up. sure you have all that in order yeah. for real. Yeah. All right, guys. And Joey's about to hit us with that B for today. Yo, so. The B for today is B funded straight up because you can't get into any deals. You can't really look into properties confidently unless you know where the money's coming from. AD said it best, man. If the money's funny, you know what I'm saying? Nobody's moving. Nobody's moving with you. Nobody's rocking with you. You can't get deals done and you want to be able to close fast and you can't do that if you don't know where the money's coming from, guys. That's right. Secure that financing. All right. Be funded, be you and be uncommon. Oh.